Hello, I'm Liv. Welcome back to another makeup and hair video. This week we are in the Edwardian era and I will be demonstrating a Gibson Girl inspired look on our lovely model Kate. This style is becoming quite fashionable again, so you might find you can incorporate some of these techniques into more modern looks too. The name Gibson Girl comes from the artist Charles Dana Gibson and his depictions of idealised feminine beauty. Gibson Girls were ideals of beautiful independent women. They were visions of hourglass figures, wasp waists and thick pompadour hairstyles, or with their hair worn loosely on the shoulders. This tutorial ended up being quite long, so we are releasing it in two parts, with part one being more about the makeup and part two focusing more on the hair. Okay, so to begin with then, I'm just going to set your hair into curls, just to make sure we've got a good foundation mm -hmm. for doing the hairstyle later, because there's quite a lot of volume, so it's good to get some root lift which is why it's a good idea to curl your hair before you start. And then I'm just going to take small sections and curl. So you get bigger, bigger curls at the back and then tighter curls at the front section of the hair. So I'm not going to bother pinning up the um, back part of the hair once we've curled it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter so much, but again, because we're going to be putting this up in a bun anyway um, and kind of combing it out slightly. So it doesn't matter if you don't have as much definition of the curls through the back of the hair. It just helps me to style it afterwards. So yeah, just repeat that basically in the sections. Lovely, okay, so moving on to the sides. I'm gonna switch now from my hair straighteners and use a conical wand instead, which will give me a tighter curl. I imagine that'll help with like the volume. Absolutely, yeah, that's it. With something like this style, it's very voluminous and mm -hmm. you, you, know, you want quite a lot of root lift. Okay. It will just help you style it later. So just be careful with one of these because they, they can be quite hot. So just taking a small section of hair and just curling it around the wand. Leave it for a few seconds. And then all I'm doing then is just holding it up in my hand like this, just to kind of stabilize that curl because it's quite warm. If you let it drop now, then you won't get the same kind of definition from it. So. And all I'm going to do is just roll that up and I'm just going to pin it in. One of these pins. And that will just hold it, let it cool down and then it will kind of, you know, it will keep that shape for longer. And then just repeat. For a few seconds, just hold it up and then just gently pin it. So yes, an awful lot of ladies would, um, they would set their hair obviously at night when they had wet hair and they'd roll their hair up in rags quite a lot of the time so that they would have lovely curly hair in the morning, ready to go. So you can, you know, you can use rollers um, or you can just use in sleeping curlers if you can deal with those, because I can't, mm -hmm. <laughs> I just cannot sleep with those in at all. Mm -hmm. So, um, but if you can, great. That always um, saves on time, doesn't it? So. Okay, well, I'm just going to put a little bit of spray. It doesn't have to be perfect. You see, that one's not perfect, but it doesn't matter. Point is getting it up and pinned. <laughs> right, other side now then. <laughs> so makeup was 
very minimal in the Edwardian era and um, it was still very fashionable for pale beauties to be lovely and fresh faced so um, cosmetics were becoming more widely available as well even though it was still frowned upon to admit that you used them you know it was considered something that you did in private and you didn't really talk about it because you didn't want to burst the bubble of natural beauty <laughs> so I'm just prepping Kate's face with some moisturizer and ladies they would often use lightening lotions as well try and make their face more pale and uh, freckles unfortunately were not in fashion <laughs> uh, so yeah they would try and make themselves look as pale as possible mm -hmm. so because of that I'm going to make Kate a little bit paler than she actually is <laughs> Not by a huge amount, otherwise it would look a little bit odd, um, but just a little bit. And just, it's really more just to cover, the, cover those freckles so they don't stand out quite as much as possible. But I don't want to get rid of them entirely because I love freckles, I think they're really beautiful. And I'm using a duo fibre brush as well, this is not MAC. It's by <laughs> ELF for eyes, lips, face. Uh, it's just as good. Try to use cruelty-free brands where I can. And I'm just stippling it on. And just blending out. So really, really thin layers. The thing is, you want to still have that lovely natural look to the skin. You don't want to really cake it on. You want to just look lovely and fresh faced and pale and beautiful. <laughs> so I'm just keeping the majority of it in the centre of the face and then just sort of blending it out so then you don't get any harsh lines. And you can use whatever foundations you like. So if you prefer using a liquid foundation or a cream foundation or even. Um, powder foundation, mineral makeup, that sort of thing. It doesn't matter, just whatever works for you. Just make sure you use a nice thin layer of it across the face. And then just take it onto the neck as well, just a little bit. And because I'm just adjusting Kate's skin tone slightly, I'm gonna take it a little bit onto the ears as well. I mean, some of the, like the very top of the ears, and it's just going to be covered with hair anyway, so, but just a little bit. So that's the foundation on. I mean, I haven't really used that much there at all. And I'm just going to conceal a little bit around the nose. I mean, you've got pretty beautiful skin, I don't really need to do that much to it, so, you know, obviously. If you've got more spots, then just um, just try and lightly conceal those. I mean, the more the more foundation concealer you put on your skin, the more people are going to notice, obviously, and it starts to then not look so natural. But you've got to be comfortable as well at the end of the day. And I'm next going to put on a little bit of highlighter just to sort of give you that lovely fresh look mm. to the skin. So I'm using a, a cream highlighter. It's the same with the blusher, really. It just kind of makes you look, look like it's coming from within almost. So it's, it's not, you know, again, the kind of powder, you can see it on the face and it's okay if it's lightly applied, but um, yeah, it can just look a bit, a bit too obviously makeup, if you know what I mean. So I'm just putting this onto the just at the top of the cheekbones there. If you don't know where that is on your face, just um, basically just feel where your cheekbone is. And you just want it to be that very, that high point there, just under the eye. And just dab it on. I'm also gonna put a little bit on the cupid's bow and a tiny bit just on the bridge of the nose. And just a tiny bit 
onto the chin as well, just in the very centre. And is it better to kind of pat that on instead of like smearing it just to give it? Definitely, yeah, because you, um, you don't want to disturb the foundation and the mm -hmm. concealer that you have done. Mm -hmm. Even though we haven't used that much, if you kind of smear it, then you move the product that's on underneath. Yeah. So just do gentle dabbing motions, just with your finger, just kind of pat it. Mm -hmm. Just be very gentle. And again, small amounts first, thin layers, and you can always build on top of thin layers. But if you put a whole load on first and you think, oh no, that's too much, yeah. um, then it's harder to sort of take that off mm -hmm. and start again. So mm -hmm. just keep applying applying thin layers and of course because it's um you know we're doing kind of an Edwardian look here mm. they wouldn't have worn that much makeup anyway so yeah. you know thin layers definitely key so yeah and I'm just going to set with a tiny weeny bit powder just down the center of the face a little bit on the forehead it's just to eliminate shine where you don't want it basically so rouge was widely used Oh, that's a gorgeous colour. Yeah. Um, so again, this is a cream, cream blusher, and I'm going to apply it again with my fingers. So again, small amount. Mm -hmm. And just start in the centre of the cheek. If you're not sure, just smile. And you just want to have that in the apple of the cheek there. And you don't want to go further than pupil so keep it sort of in the center of the apple of the cheek but don't go beyond the pupil and then just sort of blend it out but you want the majority of the color of the rouge to be in the apple of the cheek and just keep dabbing it on you can build it up and ideally the blusher that you use should be the same sort of colour that you naturally blush. Mm -hmm. So yes, it was um, quite scandalous, I should think, for the older <laughs> generation to see these young Edwardian ladies going out and buying rouge and lip tints, you know, <laughs> when before it was really frowned upon. You know, you could actually go and buy rouge and use it and use lip tints. <laughs> a lot of ladies used to use poppy petals and geranium petals to stain the lips as well, which was rather nice. That's the, that's the blusher on. Makeup was gradually accepted in the Edwardian era, but it was still considered vulgar to admit to its use. Ladies liked to preserve the myth of being naturally beautiful. Eyebrows were the main focus, and eyebrow pencils were popular. So I was just combing, combing Kate's eyebrows through there. Just make sure that all of the hairs are lying flat and neat. And then I'm just going to pencil them in a little bit. So I'm just going to start underneath and then just go upwards, just in light strokes with an angled brush. And just follow the natural shape. and just pull that product slightly up at the, at the front of the brow. But there really is hardly anything on my brush here. You, you, know, you don't want really thick, heavy mm. eyebrows. Not like today's Instagram no. eyebrows, which, you know, <laughs> that's fine, but perhaps not for an Edwardian look. Yeah. And then just where, just where you see the, Kate, the um, high point is on Kate's eyebrows. If you don't know where it is on yours and you're not sure where to start with, then just take your brush and just put it against your nose there and through your pupil and you can sort of see where it would be. Just give you that. So you can kind of see that's the high point there. So it's a good way of measuring. If you don't know about eyebrows and you're not sure what to do, another good way to see where your eyebrows should start is just holding your brush there as well. So you can see where your brow should start, where your midpoint would be, and also from the corner of the eye, where the eyebrow should end. So then I'm just taking my spoolie again and just dragging that 
the product through and just sort of combing it in. So again, just emphasis on making a nice natural look. And then I can also see where I need to put a little bit more, just that gap there. And then, as you can see, I'm just sort of combing these hairs down flat at the end just to make sure they're all going where I want them to go, nice and flat. And you get a good shape there as well. Let's just apply a little bit of black eyeshadow, just a tiny, tiny amount near the lash line. Mm -hmm. Not every Edwardian did this, but quite, quite a few um, times this has been sort of recorded, and some women did this certainly, would use burnt matchsticks to create a kind of a coal line on the eyes. And they just put that over the, um, the eyelids just to create a bit more definition. Mm -hmm. So just close for me. So I'm just, again, with an angled brush, and instead of using a pencil, I'm just gonna use a powder Just again, just to make sure everything's nice and soft. So I'm just keeping that as close as possible to the lashes and just sort of flicking it upwards. Just gonna go over that with a fairly fluffy brush and just blend it so it's not too harsh. And then I'm going to go back to the cream blusher that I used and just use that on the lips. Again, I'm just gonna dab that in. It's gonna go over and smooth over any lines, just blending in, highlighter, blusher, just to make sure you've got lovely soft lines everywhere, just go in and just go over everything again. We hope you've enjoyed part one and join us again for part two to see the main hair tutorial and the finished look.